Hello everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. I decided to make a video today as opposed to waiting to tomorrow because there's a lot that I now wanna say. Didn't make a video yesterday when we got the news that Trump was nearly assassinated uh, because I just felt like there wasn't really anything to add. We also didn't have a lot of information about what had happened and why it happened. And today we still don't have that much information, um, but we are learning more about the shooter and it's a pretty perplexing situation. The individual who tried to assassinate Trump was a registered Republican, but in 2021, he made a $15 donation on the day of Biden's inauguration to a Democratic-aligned super PAC. Um, he was a fan of a GunTube YouTube channel, was wearing merch when he carried out the attempted assassination. So, you know, there's also reports about him uh, being a loner when, when he was in high school, being bullied. He had explosive devices in his vehicle. So it's really hard to say what this is. Uh, he doesn't meet like the typical profile. So in terms of motive, we really don't know. Uh, we also found out he was in a BlackRock commercial, uh, which is very strange. So it's a very weird situation and I don't necessarily want to speculate or give you additional details that may turn out to be incorrect. What I will say is just kind of like take what you're hearing with a grain of salt because there's a lot of information that gets out there that turns out to be false and people kind of have a vested interest in getting clicks and that kind of comes at the expense of being accurate. So we really don't know at this point. But with that being said, yeah, it was a very, very significant thing that happened. Trump was nearly assassinated and almost immediately after it happened, you know, the dumb takes started rolling in, case in point. Joe Biden told his donors that it's time to put Trump in a bullseye. Well, guess what? That is exactly what someone did today with their rifle as they they attempted to assassinate President Trump. Much of the rhetoric from the left has escalated to this moment. Uh, just last week, we saw Joe Biden trying to excuse his poor performance at the debate and uh, get that behind him and say, now we need to put Trump in a bullseye. Now, aside from Marjorie Greene and Lauren Boebert, uh, Congressman Mike Collins tweeted out that Biden did this, which is so bizarre to me um, because they use very hyperbolic rhetoric all the time when talking about their opposition. Um, there's also been some people trying to blame the media for this. Uh, and I just feel like it's such a disingenuous thing to say, right? De Democrats, when they talk about Donald Trump, I think that what they've said, if you try to say that their criticisms of Trump is tantamount to stochastic terrorism, I think that is extremely, extremely disingenuous. And people who are making that claim, uh, like Ben Shapiro, for example, well, there was a shooter that was a fan of his, but he didn't take responsibility. But if Biden says and Democrats say that Trump is a threat to democracy, well, all of a sudden they're to blame. You know, there's this talk of whether or not Democrats and opponents to Donald Trump have gotten too hyperbolic in their language saying he's a threat to democracy, you know, and a wannabe dictator. And I just feel like that's such a weird thing to say because the truth matters. And factually speaking, Donald Trump, he's a threat to democracy. He incited an insurrection. You can't just say, oh, well, you know, you have to stop being truthful about Donald Trump because of this thing that happened. I think that's absolute nonsense. The truth matters. You know, if Donald Trump didn't want people to be fearful that he would be a dictator, he could quell those concerns. He could say, listen, of course, I'm not going to be a dictator. Of course, I'll accept the results of the election. Of course, I'm against violence. But Trump is not doing that. In fact, when there was an attempted assassination of Nancy Pelosi, here's what Donald Trump had to say about that. Together, we will take on the ultra left wing liars, losers, creeps, perverts and freaks who are devouring the future of this state like a swarm of locusts. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house which obviously didn't do a very good job. So we're in this situation today in large part because of Donald Trump. Political violence is much more common because this is the environment that Donald Trump and his ilk 
has cultivated. You know, uh, you had Trump Jr. also. He posted, uh, I think, really close after it happened. You know, this is my Halloween costume and it was a hammer and underwear, you know, referencing Paul Pelosi. So, you know, when something like this happens to Democrats immediately, they blame Democrats, they call them irresponsible, but they don't actually, you know, look at the way that their rhetoric has kind of fanned the flames, right? It's it's very gross. It's very disingenuous. Um, you have individuals like Tom Cotton, J.D. Vance saying, hey, we all just need to bring the temperature down after previously saying, you know, the president should uh, should use the military to violently crush protests. It's just, it's so fucking nauseating to see that. Now, Democrats have responded by doing what they're expected to do. They're largely condemning this, saying let's bring down the temperature. Joe Biden has chosen to suspend campaign ads. Um, he called Donald Trump. He's doing, you know, the responsible thing to actually try to bring down the temperature. Having said that, though, um, what he's doing is trying to equate the assassin with campus protests. And I say that because, you know, rather than attack, uh, attacking Trump, uh, there are reports that Biden is trying to instead focus on how all violence is bad by talking about how he came out against violence on college campuses. The irony there is that, you know, the Free Palestine campus protests, they were explicitly against violence. They were largely peaceful. Um, but the underlying argument that they were making is that violence is bad. But Biden is going to use that example to draw an equivalence uh, or and draw an equivalence with the assassin to basically say, hey, see, I'm consistent. I condemn all violence. Now, on the subject of condemnations of violence, I've got to say it is fucking mind blowing to see so many politicians who for the past 10 months have been cheerleading a genocide come out and condemn violence. I'm talking about John Fetterman. I'm talking about Joe Biden. All of a sudden, violence is bad. Unless it's happening abroad. What? I just, this, like seeing all of these condemnations of violence, you expect it, right? Because that's that's the important thing. That's the, that's the uh, responsible thing that you want to do if you're a Democratic Party politician. But America Cong American Congress, like this is one of the most violent institutions on the planet with the most violent people on the planet. And they're condemning violence. I just, what do you even say to that? It is so cynical, so despicable. And, you know, Putting aside those Democrats, there's other Democrats who have now chosen to unilaterally disarm this election cycle, and they're going to, I guess, unite behind Biden, and they're going to stop trying to pressure him to drop out. In other words, uh, just hand the election to Trump because unity? It makes no fucking sense. Now, there's also been conspiracy theories. You have some liberal conspiracy theories who are trying to say that this was a false flag, um, which is very stupid because somebody literally died at the rally. Two others were injured. Uh, the person who carried out the attempted assassination is dead. It's a real person. So to say that this is a false flag is very Alex Jonesy, and it it worries me because over the past week we've seen, you know, in an attempt to defend Biden, some Democratic Party loyalists really deny polls and kind of deny objective reality and to see conspiracy theories from liberals about this shooting, uh, it's just, it's not the best sign, right? Now, they're not the only ones doing conspiracy theories. You have a lot of right-wingers who are posting that this really was divine intervention. God stepped in to save Donald Trump, which is a real fucking interesting thing to say, right? Why didn't God step in to save the Trump supporter that was there? Why didn't God step in to save Nawar al alaki This is an eight-year-old girl who Trump murdered in Yemen. Why didn't God save her? Why is Trump's life more important than all these other people if it was divine intervention? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, it's because this is a cult. And, you know, having divine intervention, I guess that's that speaks to how, you know, Trump really is 
not necessarily like a demigod, but he's above everyone else. That's why there's this cult around him. He's so important that God would literally intervene and save him. So I just feel like my brain has rotted over the past couple of days from seeing so many insane takes. Um, people are just so inconsistent and everybody is going to use this in a way that fits their narrative. Uh, and it's just really sickening. Uh, in terms of the cold politics of this, how is this going to affect the election? Um, I think that it's it's logical to assume this is going to help Donald Trump. When Reagan, uh, when there was an attempt against his life, he got a big boost in the polls. Now, that did go away with time. Uh, and that kind of makes sense. And I expect the same thing to happen here. I do expect Trump to get a boost in the polls because whenever something like this happens, you see this, you know, rallying effect where people kind of like swarm to that person. For example, Elon Musk, you know, he tweeted out, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. I endorsed the president. You see people saying, oh my God, I'm really voting for him. So it like shores up support in a way um, with the people who are supporting him and then other people, they feel inclined to kind of be quiet, which kind of contributes to the support growing, right? There was an article, I can't remember, I think it was from the New York Intelligence, or I don't know though, uh, but the article was, we're all MAGA now, right? That is all logically going to lead to Donald Trump going up in the polls because he's just viewed as a more sympathetic figure. Will it last? I'm not really sure, but you know, it's certainly not great for Biden in terms of the election because, you know, he, even if this is a temporary boost for Trump, it's still not great for Biden, who is trying to climb himself out of a ditch, but apparently Democrats have decided we'll just rock with them anyway, fuck it, give up on the election, unilaterally disarm, because unity. Uh, re re really weird times that we're living in. Um, on top of that, you know, um, this is, for Trump supporters, they're going to be so much more galvanized now, uh, because this is, this could be portrayed as the ultimate underdog story, even though he's not an underdog, right? We're talking about a former president and, and rich person, but it's an underdog story in the sense that like, it's such a perfect narrative, right? You know, after losing the election, it was stolen from him. After he was jailed by Crooked Joe and nearly assassinated, he overcame all the odds and won back the White House just for us. Like it's, it's almost like a movie script. So, you know, it, it's, it's beneficial politically, to Donald Trump. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see because nobody really knows for sure uh, how this is going to play out. Uh, in, in the short term, it's, it's leading to a lot of real stupid takes, which is uh, very depressing to see, but not surprising because this is America. So um, the dumbest thing that you expect, like it's going to be more dumb than that, right? By the way, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm wearing a blue shirt with a blue background. So you kind of just see like a floating head, which is actually pretty cool. So yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't intend to go with that, but um, yeah, it works out. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that I want to say about this? Uh, not really. I'll probably say more in a video tomorrow. Um, but listen, at the end of the day, uh, I think that the politicians who are condemning this, that's what you expect from politicians. They want to cool the temperature. But I just wish that there was more consistency here. Here, I just wish that the people who are suddenly against violence were consistent and had that same standard when it comes to Palestinians, you know? But that's a pretty high expectation for an American politician because again, these people are violent. They are cynical, deeply opportunistic people. So they will say what they think they need to say if it suits whatever narrative they're going for. So yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, really crazy shit happening. Um, you know, it, it's never a good sign of a healthy democracy when you start seeing these types of assassination attempts. If you look at any other country when this happens, usually more violence follows. I'm not necessarily saying that that's going to be the case, but, you know, it's just a very worrying sign. Um, so, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but uh, buckle up because we've still got four months left in this election cycle and odds are it's going to get even more crazy. So, you know, hopefully... Um, people will try to, for the good of the country, be normal and not jump to conclusions and spread misinformation and come up with dumbass conspiracy theories. But that's, that's <laughs> even to, to like vocalize that hope is so silly because I feel like there's a bigger chance of like seeing pigs fly or seeing a unicorn than, than seeing Americans react in a, in a normal way to something. So, you know, just, we don't have to engage in the dumb fuckery, right? We can, we can choose to be chill, try to relax, 
you know, this is the beginning of a very long election cycle that is already exhausting, that's going to get more exhausting. So just pace yourselves, my friends. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's all engage in a little bit of self love. Uh, that sounds really dirty. But what I mean is like, <laughs> turn off the internet, you know, go watch a movie with your family, go outdoors. You know, I think we all owe that to ourselves because shit's just crazy right now. And if you hyper focus on it, you're only going to hurt your mental health. So I'll stop rambling and uh, I'll see you all uh, tomorrow when I release another video, probably about this. So yeah.